In our previous lessons, we looked at creating a simple tile-based map and drew it to a canvas element on a web page. We then created a simple character that the player can move around the map using the arrow keys. The map with which we were working fit exactly to the canvas element. In many situations, however, you'll want to use a map that is larger than the visible area of the screen you have to draw to. In this example, the entire map is four times as large as the visible area of the canvas. Look what happens when the character is moved to a new portion of the map. Immediately a problem occurs. The character is no longer visible. There's also another problem, which is not currently visible. The rest of the map, the other three quarters of this map, is still being drawn. However, it's not being drawn to the visible area of the canvas. So we're wasting all of the computing power needed to draw the other three quarters of this map. In this lesson, we'll look at creating a simple viewport class. It will act as a camera to follow the character around the map, and so draw the portion of the map which currently surrounds the player's character. It will also allow us to perform culling. This process allows us to only draw the areas of the map and the objects on the map which are currently visible. Anything outside of this area will not be drawn. As you can see from this graphic, without viewport culling, a large amount of drawing work is done unnecessarily. To begin with, we're going to double both the map width and map height variables from 10 tiles to 20 tiles. This will quadruple the area of the map. We also have to add additional data to the game map array to account for this new map area. As interesting as it would be to watch me type out 400 ones and zeros, I'm going to simply copy this new data from the source code which can be found on my website. We're now going to create our viewport class to keep track of the visible area of the screen. The first parameter, screen, is the dimensions of the screen drawing area. In this case, this will be the dimensions of the canvas element. The start tile will be the first, the top left tile, which will be considered on the visible area. And the end tile will be the bottom right tile or last tile, which will be drawn on the visible area. The offset is the X and Y offset in pixels from the dead center of the screen at which all tiles and map objects will be drawn. This will be calculated momentarily. The viewport class will also have an update method. This me method takes two arguments, px and py. This is the pixel position on the map relative to the top left, which we will consider dead center of the screen. We'll begin by calculating the offsets by which we'll modify the normally calculated pixel positions of map tiles and objects. The horizontal offset is calculated by dividing the drawing area width by 2 and subtracting the camera horizontal offset. Likewise, the vertical offset at which we'll modify the drawing position of map tiles and objects is calculated by dividing the drawing area height by 2 and subtracting the camera vertical offset, PY. Now we'll calculate the X and Y value of the tile which would fall underneath the dead center of our updated camera position. This actual tile does not have to exist, it's simply used as reference for calculating the start and end tiles which will be drawn. We calculate this by rounding down the PX argument by the width of a tile 
and the PY argument by the height of the tile. From this, we can calculate the start and end tile. The start tile x position is the x value that we've just calculated for the tile at the centre of the screen, minus 1, and then subtracting the rounded up value of the visible screen area width divided by 2 divided by the width of the tile. Likewise, the y value of the start tile is the y value of the tile which would appear at the centre of the screen with the new camera position, subtracting 1, and then subtracting the rounded up value of the visible drawing area height divided by 2, divided by the height of each tile. We'll now quickly ensure that the start tile falls within map bounds. If the x value for the start tile is less than 0, we simply set the x value to 0. The same for the y value. If it's less than 0, we simply set it to 0. Similar to how we, start, we calculated the start tile, we'll now calculate the end tile position. The x value for the end tile will be the x value of the tile we calculated for the centre of the screen, given the new camera position, plus 1, plus the rounded up value of the visible drawing area of the screen, the horizontal area, divided by 2, divided by tile width. And for the end tile y position, the y position of the tile which would fall at the centre of the screen, given the new camera position, plus 1, plus the rounded up value of the visible drawing area height, divided by 2, divided by tile height. We'll now ensure the end tile does not fall outside of map bounds. If the x value of the end tile is greater than or equal to the map width, then we'll simply set the end tile x value to map width minus 1. Also for the y position of the end tile, if it's greater than or equal to the map height, we'll set it to map height minus 1. Now, in our window unload method, we're going to set the viewport screen parameter. The width of the viewport screen, we'll simply use document and we'll get the element game, which is our canvas element, and we'll use its width parameter. And for the height, we'll use the game element's height parameter. Now we're going to update the draw game method. After the piece of code used to manage the player movement, we're going to update the viewport camera center position. We're going to call the viewport update method, and for the x value, we're going to use the player character x position. And to this we'll add the width of the player character, divided by 2. And for the y value, for the update method, we're going to use the player character y position. And to this we'll add the player character height divided by 2.
Next, before we begin any drawing to the canvas, we're going to clear the entire canvas to a plain black colour. We'll do this by setting the fill style for the canvas to black. We'll then draw a filled rectangle starting at the very top left of the canvas element and with a width and height equal to the canvas element width and height. We can get the width and height of the canvas element from our viewport screen parameter. We also need to update our nested drawing loops. Instead of drawing the entirety of the map, from Y0 to map height and from X0 to map width, we'll now only be drawing the tiles that fall before, between the start tile and the end tile. We'll start the Y value at the start tile Y value, and we'll continue whilst it's less than or equal to the end tile Y value. Likewise, for the X value, we'll start at the start tile X value and continue whilst it's less than or equal to the end tile X value. This will allow culling of any tiles that fall outside of the visible area of the map. We also need to modify the X and Y position of anything we're drawing to the map, tiles or offset objects, to add the offset parameter of the viewport. For the tile positions, we'll now add the viewport offset X value to the X position at which the tiles will be drawn and the Y offset to the Y value, Y position at which the tiles will be drawn. The same for the player character. We'll add the X and Y offset to the player position. After modifying the source code, you should see the following when loading up the file in your browser. There is now a much larger map, and when the character moves around the map, the camera follows them. What you don't see is that the tiles which fall outside of this visible area are no longer drawn at all. This is Viewport Culling. In our next lesson, we'll look at adding some different types of tiles to the map to make the map somewhat more interesting.